Did you hear that? It's pretty, isn't it? Would you believe me if I told you that this piece was composed by Beethoven? Now, how would you feel if I told you that he composed it in 2012? This is former University of California music professor David Cope. He's an author, composer, and scientist, but he's best known for his creation of EMI. EMI, or Experiments in Music Intelligence, is a computer program that can study pieces composed by other musicians and can create a new one for them in their style. Every composer has his or her own style that makes their music unique. By studying things like the music's composition or the arrangement of notes in multiple pieces done in the same style, you can learn that style. Cope recognized this, and during a time of composer's block, he wondered if he could create a computer program that could write music for him. After years of trying, he finally created something that would produce the results that he wanted. Any piece could be given as an input, and Emmy would output something new and different. Cope had created something that could recreate music that hadn't been composed for hundreds of years. His program can create things not only for those who are still alive and well, but also for those who have turned to dust. Since its creation, Emmy has resurrected the musical abilities of artists like Bach, Vivaldi, or Beethoven. Cope has a YouTube channel where you can listen to all of Emmy's creations, which I have of course linked to in the description down below. Now, music can be classified as a form of media, and if it's possible to use computers to resurrect artists' styles from previous works, could we do the same with other media? Boo. This is Van Gogh's interpretation of the Eiffel Tower. Here's a bit of a twist to the Mona Lisa. And here are other examples of art created by a computer in the styles of other artists. All of these were created by something called an artificial neural network, or ANS for short, which is a computer model that is based off biological neural networks and are used in AI research. Although this isn't quite the same as what David did, it is the same basic idea. Input some things into a computer, and the program creates something new based off the reoccurring trends. Something cool about these ants is that they have the ability to produce dreams, just like you and me. They create images based off only their memories and other works that they have processed, and the results are truly something out of nightmares. So we know that computers can resurrect art styles that have been forgotten by time, but can we do the same thing with other things, like text? Can we use computers to speak for people? This is Eater9. It's a social network that learns from you as you post things, and will eventually learn enough to be able to post for you. They call this your counterpart. This AI can become a copy of you if you allow it. If I were to die, this AI would still post for me. It would still speak for me from beyond the grave. It will have become my ghost. In the age of big data, everything is copied and stored. Everything from the words you post, to the pictures and videos you upload, to the browser history you thought you deleted. It's all stored as data. If we can take things that people leave behind and use it to resurrect that piece of them, then just think about what else we can do. I am not Anders. I'm a file that was uploaded to this platform that when played, flashes images on your screen while pre-recorded audio plays in the background. I am nothing more than a bunch of lights that blink on and off and change color, depending on what the file says. You simply perceive me to be another person, because your brain picks up on familiar shapes to better understand its surroundings. For all I know, this video could be a hundred years old and I could be dead, speaking to you from beyond the grave. It may seem weird, but it's true. All I am is data. I am a copy, a duplicate, a snapshot in time, a ghost. Doomed to be played and replayed over and over again for your entertainment. I'm not the only one though. There are countless other copies of the same person created in different formats scattered across the internet. And of course, new ones will be created by the creator until he passes away. But together, they create a picture that uniquely represents him, or me if you prefer. Like a set of fingerprints or a strand of DNA. This is true for anyone who frequents the internet. They are all creating data that represents them. Every post you make on Facebook, every picture you share to Instagram, every tweet you put on Twitter, every video you upload to YouTube collectively creates a mirror image of everything that makes you you. Now this brings up an interesting question. If we all have data based around us, who gets to keep it when you die? Does it automatically go to the families of the deceased? Do the companies get your data? 
or maybe it's left alone to sit for eternity? This is a very interesting question because it brings up other questions like, was your data or your copy really even yours to begin with? Considering all that I've told you, might we all agree that it's possible to use all this data to create a virtual you? Something that looks, talks, thinks, and even acts like you. In the same way that we use ands to create pictures from the works of the dead, and how people like David Cope have created computers that can write music in place of people. I envision a future where people can take all the data left behind from the deceased and create something to lighten the grief of losing a loved one. Something that can continue on in place of the dead, or at least something to say goodbye to. This may seem like something out of science fiction, but with the rise of big data and the incredible advances in AI technology, it's quickly becoming science fact. When technologies like these become reality, there will be ethical and moral questions that will need to be discussed and answered, but history has shown that we as a species will overcome these challenges that follow new technology. Whatever your opinion is on things like artificial intelligence, big data, or recreating the dead from memories, we can all agree that each and every one of us are slowly becoming ghosts in the machine. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I know this isn't the type of video I normally make, but videos that explore topics like these are really fun to do, and I would love to do more in the future. Your, your feedback would be greatly appreciated. A couple years ago around this time, I made another video like this one exploring the social media algorithms that unintentionally breed polarization between people, which can lead to violence and death, which was partially speculation on my part, but data has shown that to be the case, especially in the US with the last presidential election. I just thought it was cool and wanted to give you an update on that. If you like what I do, then you can support my work on Patreon. Share this video and follow me on Twitter. Subscribe if you haven't, and until the next one, have a wonderful day.